Assalamualaikum Abu Wan Assalamualaikum Okay Okay uh, We are going to do uh, the interview today So Atika Based on our micro, te- uh, micro teaching video We have identified that There are a few types of questions That you have used in your lesson Which are yes or no question Referential question Display question Close ended question As well as open ended questions So my first question is Are the types of questions that you use Depend on the stages of your lesson Such as Sub induction Pre, while and post Well um, not really uh, I am the type of teacher Who likes to provide Different materials For different stages Especially if I am doing A uh, a non-textbook based lesson plan. So the types of questions I ask are highly dependent on the type of materials that I am using in that current stage. Um, the types of questions I ask also depends on the student's mood. So if I see that the students are getting tired or giving me lesser and lesser responses, especially by the end of the lesson, Uh, I tend to ask questions that require short answers, such as uh, yes-no questions and also close-ended questions. Okay, um, my second question is, from our analysis, we found that you tend to use yes-error questions a lot. What is your purpose of asking uh, this type of question? Um, Well, I tend to ask this type of questions after I give instructions or during uh, answer discussion with the students. So, uh, yes, no questions is a quick way for me to know if they understand what I have instructed them, uh, what I have instructed them to do, whether their answer is correct or wrong, whether they are following along or being left behind. So, uh, It's just uh, so. It's just a short question, such as "Do you understand?" or "Is everyone alright?" or "Can I proceed?" It's faster. I also use this question when I want to point out certain information and to see whether the student notice uh, notice that specific information is correct or wrong. I notice whether the certain information is correct or wrong. Okay, um, that's very interesting. Um, my uh, my third question is: uh, We notice that uh, when we ask uh, yes and no question, we don't really wait for our uh, responses. Uh, why is that? Well, well, it is mostly a repetition or just something that I would ask to set the tone of the class. So I don't really sometimes I don't really need uh, a response. So sometimes when I ask things like that, uh, there are paragraphs right. Uh, it's just to repeat the information that I want them to understand or notice, and just to loosen the tone of the lesson to not make it sound so strict. Okay, that's very good. Um, my first question is, what is the purpose of you using um, referential question? And why was it most frequent in your uh, lesson? So well, uh, well, it's because I only ask referential questions at the beginning of the lesson, which is before I started the lesson to know how my students are feeling. To me, referential questions are much more towards informal communicative speech. So I also use referential questions when I want authentic answers from my students such as to relate with their experiences or their opinions but i tend to use it less frequent as the lesson progresses because of uh, the time limitation so uh, if i think that i am dragging the lesson i would just use close and yes no questions uh, okay uh, so now i i believe <laughs> i'm going to ask a few more questions 
Okay. Alright, so for the next question, Atika, is there a purpose of you using open-ended and closed-ended questions? Uh, well, yes, of course. Um, I would use open-ended questions mainly to gather more responses from my students and to give them uh, more ways on how to answer my question. I also use open-ended questions because uh, I want them to extend and el elaborate their responses. So I use close-ended questions is when I want to directly know what their answer is for the specific question that we are discussing. Okay, so for the next question, what about display questions and why do you use these types of questions in your lesson? Um, well, it's because I want to see their comprehension based on the material which I have provided them. I also use these questions because I want to provide more opportunities for my students to speak and produce the language even though the answer is clear or is already on the material. Okay, so for the last question, from your macro teaching lesson, which question do you think is able to get yeah. the most responses from the students? Um, well, first of all, in my opinion, there are two ways which I would define as most responses. The first one being uh, is the number of students responding to the questions. So this will probably probably be yes, no, and close-ended questions. Because I would usually get like more than one student giving me responses because it is just yes, no, and close-ended. Uh, the second way to define the most responses is by the complexity, length, as well as the various answers given by the students. Uh, so for example, when I ask, what can you see? Students tend to give me much more longer or complex responses, such as I can see mangoes, teacher. So uh, it is not just yes or no, uh, yes or no answer. Yeah. So that's how I would see the most uh, responses. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for your uh, time. So that is all uh, the question that we are going to ask today. Um, Yes, uh, Afira, anything else to add? None for me. Thank you. Yeah. Of you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.